This is the National Library of Scotland's display on Alan Ramsay writing the Scots Enlightenment, which celebrates the achievements of Alan Ramsay and his contribution to literature in 18th century Scotland. This display is done in conjunction with our colleagues at the University of Glasgow, who are currently working on the AHRC funded project, The Collected Works of Alan Ramsay. The display focuses on Ramsay's contributions to poetry, the drama, his engagement with Scots music, and also explores his relationship with his son, the painter Alan Ramsay. Alan Ramsay was an extremely active poet. His work first appeared in print around 1713, and his name became popular on broadsides and chapbooks for the rest of the decade. But it was not until 1721 that his first book-length production appeared. Like many other poets in the 18th century, Ramsay funded his work by setting up a subscription list. Subscribers had their names printed at the front of the book and the author gained the credibility of their support. In Ramsay's book, we can find some of his best work, such as the elegy on Maggie Johnston and the familiar epistles with William Hamilton of Gilbert Field. There are poems in Scots and in English, ranging in topic from Edinburgh street life to political actions of the day. Poems that had been printed before, such as Contempt, were gathered here again in this first full collection. We can also learn a great deal about where Ramsay drew his inspiration in this display. We know that his earliest works were the product of club culture and keen observations of Edinburgh life since moving to the city in 1701. But over time, Ramsay became an avid curator of older literary works. Here at the National Library of Scotland, we have the Bannatyne Manuscript, one of the most important documents in the history of Scottish literature. Ramsay consulted the Bannatyne in 1724, and in 1726, he scribbled down a poem inside in praise of the works that he'd encountered. I'm sure the staff here today would not tolerate such an act of vandalism. But it is from this collection of early Scottish works, compiled by the Edinburgh merchant George Bannatyne during the plague, that Ramsay used to create his own book, The Evergreen. Printed in two volumes in 1724, The Evergreen's full title should be spelled out, The Evergreen being a collection of Scots poems wrote by the ingenious before 1600. Ramsay was presenting his readers with a view into the past, a view into Scottish literature before the Union of the Crowns in 1603, at which point the Royal Court was removed from Edinburgh to London with King James. Ramsay was making a statement celebrating the older Scots culture and language and telling everyone that he intended to revive it. Music plays an important role in Alan Ramsay's work. One of his most successful publications was his song collection, The Tea Table Miscellany, first published in 1723. However, Ramsay doesn't provide music notation to accompany his songs. Instead, he indicates that the song should be sung to the tune of. And the tune was generally a popularly known tune at the time. He would use the same tactic when he published the ballad opera version of His Gentle Shepherd in 1729. Ramsay did print one music book, Alexander Stewart's Music for Alan Ramsay's Collection of Scots Songs. And this was likely to provide accompaniments to the songs found in the tea table miscellany. The first time that we see music notation appearing in an edition of The Gentle Shepherd is John Robertson's 1758 edition of The Gentle Shepherd. This is a really important development in the history of the work because it is the first time that we see dialogue, lyrics, and music notation appearing together to create a much more comprehensive picture of The Gentle Shepherd in print. By the time Andrew Fowlis printed his 1788 edition of The Gentle Shepherd, we see that the music notation appears in a more professional manner. One of Ramsay's most famous and enduring works is his Gentle Shepherd. But it's clear he didn't have a singular vision for the work as he adapted the material over several years. The leading characters first appeared in the 1720 eclogue Patey and Roger and its sequel from 1723 Jenny and Maggie. And this was before the publication of the play in 1725 and then the ballad opera in 1729. Ramsay 
appears to have had quite a lot of admiration for the work. And we can see this in the whimsical drawings and the lettering that he includes in his fair copy created in 1725. In addition to writing plays, Ramsay opened his own theatre at Crubber's Close in 1736, and Farquhar's The Virgin Unmasked was one of the first performances. Unfortunately, the theatre was heavily opposed by the city magistrates, and it was closed just a year later. The theatre was clearly important to Ramsay, and he campaigned for the protection of theatres for most of his life. So while Alan Ramsay was financially successful with his own poetry, he also wanted to secure an opportunity for his son, who was a promising painter. And to this end, he wrote several letters asking for potential patronage to send his son to Italy to learn to be a painter. And this was successful, as we can see here, from Alan Ramsay Jr's 1737 Neapolitan passport. While he was in Italy, Ramsay Jr also met James Stewart and Charles Edward Stewart and attended a Masonic Lodge on no less than three occasions, as we can see here from his signatures. Meanwhile, back in Scotland, Alan Ramsay Sr was constructing his new house called Goose Pie House, which was named after a Goose Pie Tin uh, on Castle Hill in Edinburgh. And this is still in place today in the place named Ramsay Gardens. And it was here that Ramsay Sr spent the remaining days of his retirement before his death in 1758. 